Hey guys, welcome back to Zolong's channel. You're watching HLMS, one of the most detailed Gundam lore series. Today, we are back to the part two of the Exia episode. This episode will only focus on Exia. For Australia and GN technology explanation, please go to Australia and all Gundam episode. Before we start this video, make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell next to it. Turn on your subtitles, get some snacks and drinks. Let's roll. As the second generation Gundams were finished and testing was done, Celestial Being has begun to develop the third generation Gundams. As CB decided to introduce Introduced themselves to the world in AD 2307, they developed four Gundams and gave them specific role to complete the arm intervention. Gundam Exia is one of the third generation Gundams, codename is Seven Sword, just like its name, Exia has seven sword and specialized for melee combats. Exia is directly modified and developed from Australia because Australia was designed to have human-like precise movements, so Exia is developed to be merely specialized due to the fact the internal structure is more flexible than other Gundams. Being flexible means that it has advantage during melee combats, as Exia can perform moves that normal MS cannot perform or predict. Since Exia has the privilege of finer movements, it has the most complex frame out of every third generation Gundams. Exia's armor is E carbon, but CB used a better and more advanced material to create the E carbon. So, when it comes to standard MS armor in the AD timeline, Exia is basically untouchable as its E carbon has very high resistance to both temperature changes and corrosion. Adding the fact that Exia has a small GM particle layer covered on the armor surface is a double layered protection so before MS with GN drive tile showed up, nothing can harm Exia. On paper, Exia is pretty much untouchable when the arm intervention was just started. However, to allow Exia to perform human-like precise movements, the armor is cut into more pieces than other free Gundams. During certain movements, the inner frame and joints will expose to the enemy. There's a possibility that if Exia was hit on the armor gaps, weaker inner frame parts or joints, Exia will take internal damage. Exia is powered by one of the five OG GN drives, combining E Carbon's lightweight and GM Particle's ability to manipulate mass. Exia can move around in space freely and fly around in the atmosphere without any external support. Exia is not only untouchable during the early stages of arm intervention, the raw output of Exia is roughly six times stronger than one of the newest MS during that time, Union Flag. Also, Exia has three key parts to make sure the particles are going to the right part on the Gundam or perfecting the MBAC performance at anywhere. GN particles will be controlled by the clavicle antennas, GN cables throughout the body, GN condensers in the arms and legs. Thanks to the three key parts, Exia has one of the finest GN particle controls. When Eolia Schoenberg created the plan, he did consider a hypothesis. What if CB has a traitor? The answer is on Exia and Vaj. Both Gundams got a different role when it comes to remove the traitor. If a Gundam Meister betrayed the organization, Vaj would detach the armor and reveal Nadole activate the trial system. Trial system will generate a trial field and disable every Gundam that is linked to Feather operating system in a limited area, then execute the trader while the Gundam is disabled. For Exia, its GN sword, GN long and short blade can penetrate GN field, so Exia became the key if a Gundam civil war happened. Moving on to the weapons, Exia's main weapon is GN sword. Before GN sword was finished, the Royal color of Exia has a different main weapon for MS testing. Proto -GN sword was temporarily equipped onto Exia for a few testing. This weapon is the same on Astraea. GN sword is mounted on the right forearm which leaves the right hand free for holding other weapons. It's the largest out of the seven swords. The blade itself is longer than Exia's arm. Normally, the GN sword will be folded which happens to be the rifle mode. Rifle mode allows Exia to shoot beams out for ranged combat. It's also the primary range option. When the enemy is closing in, the GN sword will unfold itself. Exia can use GN sword to to stab or cut the target. If it needs more cutting power, the sword can be covered by GM particles to enhance the sharpness. GN sword is designed to be flexible, allowing Exia to respond to both melee and ranged combats. However, it has two downsides. One is that GN sword is large, which means it cannot be used in narrow areas. Two is that switching between two modes are not instantaneous, which means there's a chance that the enemy can spot a window and counter attack. 
Other than the Jian sword, Xia has different melee weapons to counter different situations. Coming first is a pair of Jian beam sabers on the back of the shoulders. They are the standard weapon for every first generation Gundams. Just like the beam sabers from other Gundam timelines, Jian beam sabers will have power reduction due to atmospheric conditions. Majority of the nations are hoping to develop them successfully. CB is the first organization developed it. On the back of the waist, Xia got a pair of Jian beam daggers. They got the same basic system like the Jian beam sabers except they consumed less energy and it missed a shorter blade. Since the energy is more focused due to the blade is shorter, it's hard to defuse the short blades. Due to the size and features, GM beam daggers are very suitable as a throwing weapon. The last two weapons are the GM long and short blade. They got different length, one short and one long. These GM blades got a similar design purpose like the GM sword, which is a physical sword but able to charge GM particles onto the surface, thus enhances the cutting power. According to calculation, GM blades can easily cut through 3 meters thick of e-carbon. The GM blades took the longest time to develop out of the 7 swords, which is why it's unavailable during the early armed interventions. They got the same idea as the GM sword, which is the ability to penetrate GM field if a Gundam Civil War does happen. Another reason why they took a long time to finish is because of the technological difficulty since the length is different so the GM particle coverage needs more time to adjust correctly. Xia has two self-defense options. There's a built-in GM Falcon in each forearm. They got low firepower and rapid fire rate, perfect to restrict enemies' movements and destroy conventional weapons. However, because the power is weak so it cannot damage E-Carbon armor. Defense-wise, Xia got a GM shield on the left forearm. The shield is made from e-carbon and covered by GM particles. As long as the shield is charged by Xia, it cannot be destroyed by non-GM weaponry. The shield's blue parts can slightly expand to increase the defense area, but when it's expanded, it will expose the shield's internal parts, which means Xia needs to release more GM particles to strengthen the defense. It's not a wise choice. Expanding the shield will lead to weaker physical defense capabilities and slightly increase the GM particle consumption. GM shield may become a hindrance when Xia is dual wielding weapons, so it can launch without mounting a shield. However, Setsuna's fighting style is exactly dual wielding weapons, so he often throws away the shield during combat. For special systems, third generation Gundams will be linked to Feather through Feather linked operating system. They also got optical camouflage during stationary mode, allowing the Gundam to blend in the environment and making it look invisible. After Eolia's death, every Gundam with an original GN drive can activate Toramzam. I've already explained Toramzam in old Gundam's episode, so let's move on. AD 2301, a civil war between the Kingdom of Azadistan and Republic of Krugis was ongoing. An anti-government guerrilla organization named KPSA sent out the child soldiers, using the so-called devotion to God as a reason to let the child soldiers to fight. Within the chaos, a child named Solan Ibrahim was running for his life from an MS. Li Bongzi Almark piloted the old Gundam and intervened the civil war, which was a testing for old Gundam too. Li Bongzi was supposed to eliminate the witnesses to keep the organization secret, but Solan was looking at the old Gundam like it's a savior. His eyes made Li Bongzi felt admired and worshipped, which was why Li Bongzi didn't kill Solan. One year later, the first generation Gundams were completed and it was time to find the Gundam Meisters. Great Fire Lantel recruited Nidu Dilandi, which is Lock on Stratos, to pilot Denimes. Test subject E57, which is Alleluia Haptism, to pilot Kyrios. Last recruit is Tiliade, which was awakened by Feda to pilot Gundam Vaj. Grave cannot find a suitable candidate to pilot Exia, so Lasse Ion was finalized to pilot Exia at one point. However, Li Bongs used his authority and allowed Solan to backdoor, which Solan adapted the codename of Sitsna FCA and pilot the Exia. On the 6th of October, AD 2307, Exia arrived at the AEU orbital elevator in Africa and CB has officially started the arm intervention. Exia has engaged with the newly developed AEU Enact, which Exia easily defeated the Enact in front of every AEU delegate and spectator. Entering phase 2, Exia was surrounded by a group of AEU Helium Perpetuum. With the assistance from Gundam Dynamis, Exia took out the rest of the AEU Helions and finished the mission successfully. Soon, another armed intervention started on the island of Salon. The Gundams intervened a 3 century old conflict between Sinhalese majority and Tamil minority. With the combo attack from Exia and Dynamis, both sides started to retreat. While Exia was heading to the meeting point, Graham Eka engaged Setsna with his Union flag. The battle between between them didn't last long as Exia easily disarmed the Union flag, 
resulted Graha must retreat. The Meisters were assigned to different missions. Exia reappeared at the island of Ceylon, destroying the remaining military forces. Without a doubt, Exia finished the mission very quickly, but a Tyrion high mobility type suddenly appeared and attacked Exia. Seluge Suminov wanted to test Exia personally. He threw away the firearm and decided to melee Exia. Of course, Exia cuts off the right arm of the Tyrion high mobility type, but within this short window, Seluge grabbed the Exia's head and attempted to at least take the head off. In the end, Sentinel countered it by completely disabled the Tyrion high mobility type with GM Beam Saber. The Gunners appeared at Taribia. CB concluded that Taribia is involved in promoting war and hence decided to intervene. Taribia's military forces were getting wrecked. Taribia's Prime Minister called the President of Union and decided to give up the secede. Union responded and sent their forces to support Taribia. Graham attacked Exia with his custom flag. Cessna tries to counter the attack but failed as Graham's custom flag was way too fast. Graham shot the Exia. Cessna borrowed the momentum of the shot and landed into the ocean, escaped through underwater. Then HRL was testing their new MS Tian Taozi, piloted by a super soldier named Soma Pilis. However, Alleluia happens to be in the orbital elevator and both super soldiers' quantum brainwaves started to affect each other. Out of pain, Soma shot one of the gravity blocks and people were trapped in those blocks. Alleluia ignored the orders and used Kyrios to push the gravity blocks. Seleuge told him to give up as time's up. After confirming the civilians were all gathered at the middle block, Setna sliced the clouds apart to keep a clear view. Lokon used the super substratus spheric altitude gun and sniped the blocks on the side to reduce weight. The free Gundam successfully stopped the incident. After the rescue was over, AU announced that they will hold a military exercise with Republic of Moralia, which included the PMC Trust in the exercise too. This military exercise has deployed over 130 MS. The Gundams once again started the armed intervention. Each of them completed their own mission successfully. Meanwhile, Exia was ambushed by an AEU Enact. The pilot of the Enact predicted Exia's movement and hit every shot on it. While fighting the Enact, Setsuna remembered those moves and recognized the pilot. Through the light communication, both MS stopped and both pilots came out of the cockpit. Setsuna immediately recognized the pilot of the Enact is Ali Alusajis, the guy who brainwashed him into Child Soldier. The atmosphere got more intense, then MS distracted Zaj right on time and deliberately missed the shot to save Setsna. Sarges was retreated. The Gundams were moving on to the next phrase. The Meisters used the ravine to hide their location and reappeared at the front of the headquarter. With the cooperator attack, the Gundams swept the headquarter instantly, ending with Moralia firing a surrender signal. At the same time, La Edira, a terrorist group, has randomly attacked different cities on the world. CB located their bases and each Gundam was sent to destroy those bases Exia was sent to destroy a transport ship, but the MA suddenly caught Exia. Unfortunately, the Sui Chai was an old MA and Exia just cut it out without fighting much, ending the mission afterwards. The Gundams were back into space. HRL has formed an elite team called Chobu to capture them. They deployed thousands of small duplex communication units around the areas. If an area suddenly lost the signal, that's how they know where CB is. A moment later, the E-Sensor picked up the enemy signal. Kyrios and Vaj was launched first. The original plan was to let the enemy forces believe that they only deployed two Gundams and bait them to attack Ptolemaios directly. Then, Kyrios and Vaj will return to flank the whole fleet. Of course, the plan didn't work. The battleships that Kyrios and Vaj engaged were dummies. The MS team already deployed and joined the main force. On the other side, Denimus used its GM missiles and shot down the unmanned ship that was going kamikaze. The whole MS force hit behind the unmanned ship and started the wave attack on the Ptolemaios. Exia and Denimus hardly destroyed the Tyrion squad as Chobu's goal is to lure them away to capture them one by one. Meanwhile, Kyrios was captured while returning to support Patella Mouse. Tilia had to review Nadole to prevent getting captured and he eliminated the captured squad. Hallelujah took over and Kyrios was moving again. He also tortured one of the captured squad members to death while heading back to Patella Mouse. It was a close call, but all four Gundams remained fine. After the maintenance work was done, Exia and Denimus landed on Earth and intervened the South African War. Mission was finished without a flaw. In Azadistan's city area, a group of renegade amps marched through the street and started a rebel. Exia descended from the sky and quickly took out every renegaded amph. At the same time, another group of renegaded amps already arrived at the Kesh region. Setsuna saw the child soldiers fighting the amps 
flashbacks about his own past reappeared again and he rushed into the battlefield with Exia. Despite the amps were destroyed, but none of the child soldiers survived. After the battle, Cessna investigated the battlefield and guessed the location. Lock on got the message and they went to save Lakamadi. Cessna's assumption was correct. Sarges planned the whole kidnapping and rebellion in Azadistan. Cessna engaged with Sarges Inact. Although Cessna's skills weren't enough, but he still harmed Sarges Inact out of range. At the same time, Lokon and Honglong already rescued Lakamadi. Next day, a disarmed Exia arrived at the palace, escorting Lakamadi back to Asadistan. Shortly, AU, XRL, and Union came together and decided to join forces, holding one of the biggest military exercises. This time was different. Instead of engaging the Gundams directly, all factions decided to bombard the Gundams non-stop and tiring out the Meisters. At midnight, the bombarding stopped and each faction's ace pilots has arrived and easily captured the Gundams. Exia got away for a bit longer, but ultimately got caught by Sarge's AU Enact plus Agarisa Type 13, trapped in the plasma field. While Setsuna was getting tortured, and Anno Gundam shot the Agarisa and saved Setsuna. The military exercise was stopped. The reinforcement is known as the Team Trinity. Over the short period of time, Trinity attacked a lot of bases with no warnings or reasons. Ignore any surrender signal, making sure every time when they attacked, every witness is dead regardless they are soldiers or not. Not only the extreme attacks, Nana Trinity also attacked civilians for no reason. While the Sonole Gundams were moving to somewhere else, Setsuna identified Trinity as the conflict starter and decided to interfere the team. Despite being 1v3, Exia did manage to destroy most of the GM Fangs from Sunole and Suvai, but one Gundam cannot fight free on its own. Tilia appeared just on time, as he does not believe Trinity is part of the Eolius plan too. Exia and Vaj used team formation to split the Sunole Gundams apart. Exia engaged with Sunole and Zvai. Vaj interrupted Sunole Ainz and Sunole Dolai to prevent Ainz start charging its GN launcher. Johan and Nana saw the opportunity to shut down Vaj, but Tilia perched Vaj's armor and reviewed Nadole again, then disabled both Gundam with the trial system. However, the trial system was shut off as the level 7 access of data was rewritten by someone else. Then MS arrived and the battle didn't fully turn into 3v3. Johan used the Meister's private data, reviewed Setsna and Lokon's real name as well as their past. The exposure of the past left the Meisters speechless. The Sloan Lake Gundams retreated after exposed the history. In Antarctica, the representative of each superpower nations discovered the 30 GN Drive Tau. Jinx was developed, and soon the battle was no longer one-sided. The Gundams engaged a large group of Jinx, clearly in disadvantage as they hardly damaged the Jinx squad. In the Veda terminal, Nibong's hacked into Veda and disabled the Gundams. Miss Sumeragi already predicted Veda was no longer reliable. She prepared a new system for the Gundams. Except Vaj, the other three Gundams has the system updated and able to move again. The immobilized Vaj became an easy target. Tilia was about to be killed. Lokon saved Tilia and blocked the attack with the GM full shield on Denimus. Although Telia was saved, but Lokon wasn't. His right eye was injured and unable to snipe for a long time. On Earth, another Jinx squad has completely defeated the Trinity. Setsna was unsure about Gundam's existence and hoping to find the answer on Earth. Meanwhile, Sarges has already hijacked the Zuvai and shot down the Ainz. Setsna came out and noticed that Sarges is piloting the Zuvai. Without a doubt, Sarges completely overpowered Setsna. Right before the final battle, due to Eoli is dead. Tolamza was unlocked and Exia got away from the attack. Setsna can't control it properly, so he just slamming the attack on high speed. All Exia destroyed was Survive's shield and Sarge's retreated. UNE launched another attack. The Gundams were in trouble. Lokon attacked the fleet with the GN Arms Type D plus Gundam Denimus, which forced the UNE to retreat to protect the fleet. Sarge's arrived and briefly fought the Denimus. The battle ended with Zuvai was severely damaged by the wreckage of a GN cannon. Lokon gave his life as he was killed by the GN cannon's explosion. By the time Setsla arrived, the battle was over and only wreckages left. UNE launched the final attack of the Operation Fallen Angels, planning to end it once for all. Exia was carried by the assault container, ready to engage the Aluvato, piloted by Alejandro Kona. While engaging the Aluvato, the assault container was destroyed, so Exia and GN Arms Type E launched separately. Exia docked with the GN Armor Type E, shooting down Aluvato's large GN Fang one by one. Lasse and Cessna charged towards the Aluvato with the last size GN Sword and GN Cannons. Aluvato lost 
both of its large close combat arms, but Lasse was injured badly and the GN armor type E was disabled too. Exia came out from the explosion, slicing the Alovato with his GN sword. While it's not over yet, the core was revealed, which is the Alovaron. Alejandro attacked the Exia again and explained his own plan. Then he charged the beam cannon and decided to overkill the Exia, but Cessna activated Tolamsam in the last second. With the Tolamsam's high speed, Alejandro didn't hit anything and Exia closed in, penetrating the GN field with the GM blades. Cessna yelled out the CB's belief and used all seven swords to finish the Alvaron. The last moment of Alejandro was Libong's revealed his own plan while the Alvaron exploded. Battle was not over yet. Graham came with the GM flag, engaging the Exia. Revenge blinded Graham's thinking. All he seeks for is revenge and nothing else. In the heated battle, both MS was severely damaged. GM flag was destroyed and Graham has a huge scar left on his face and body, Cessna drifted in space with the disabled Exia. Exia has more than just the original form. With the new MB setting, Exia has a total of two upgrades. Starting with the Avalanche Exia, the model number has two shortened form. XS means high speed and A01 means Avalanche Unit 1. This analog equipment is developed by Ian Vashti. He was a mechanic working for AEU before recruited by CB. So when he was designing the Avalanche equipment, he wanted Exia to be as good as aircrafts or atmospheric use MS when it comes to flight. The name Avalanche got special meaning, which is passing by in an instant, consuming everything in its path, like the real life Avalanche. Avalanche Exia is super fast. The newest atmospheric use MS like Union Flag and AU Enact cannot even catch up to it. Even the fastest Gundam during that time, Gundam Curios, cannot outspeed Avalanche Exia. Since Avalanche Unit is an add on equipment to make sure Exia's original ability will not be affected by additional weight, Avalanche Unit is designed under 5 ton, weighting at 4.9 ton total. The whole unit is equipped on the upper body of Exia. These add ons are equipped with GN condensers. The shoulders got the largest one. Like I mentioned before in the old Gundam episode, usually the equipment will charge itself when the GN drive is in stationary mode. However, because Avalanche Exia is designed to burst out the GN particles to achieve maximum speed, the regular charging won't work. So, if Exia needed to use the Avalanche Unit, during a mission, it must be charged an hour before the mission starts. Now, if Avalanche Exia is just fighting normally, the particle consumption is remained the same just like without the add-ons. Once the Avalanche mode is activated, the shoulders and arms will be locked together. A GM field will be generated in front of the Gundam. Every GM condensers in the add-on and on the Gundam will discharge the GM particles instantly. It gives Avalanche Exia 10 minutes of super speed. In those 10 minutes, not a single MS can beat Avalanche Exia when it comes to speed. Essentially, this equipment takes an hour to charge for 10 minutes of super speed. Well, is it completely useless? Not entirely. Those 10 minutes can do more than just increasing the flight speed. During those 10 minutes, if Avalanche Exia is charging towards a target, the melee attack increases as the acceleration is the cherry on the top. The super speed enhances the cutting power even more. In terms of general use, it might be a little useless, but if it's ready for a critical moment, Avalanche Exia is the trump card to end the mission in a short time. It's possible Avalanche Exia can go super speed over 10 minutes, but that requires concentrating the GM particles for flight only and disarm the Avalanche Exia to lighten the weight even more. Weapon-wise, Avalanche Unit is developed to increase travel distance and flight speed, so there's no extra weapons. The seven swords are still available but all stored on the upper body. There is a pair of weapon arms on the back to allow quick access to different weapons. The default weapon on the arms is the GM blades, but if needed, the GM sword can also be stored on one of the weapon arms to allow quick access. Also, if the avalanche unit is emptied or action needed to engage the enemy, avalanche unit can be perched at any time to remove that weight. AD2307, a young historian, Robert Spacey, was still a political historian inspected the Union Armed Force due to his interest to politics. During the inspection, he was talking to a UN inspection team pilot named Deborah Gallia. The conversation was interrupted quickly as the alarm of the base goes off 
Robert saw the Avalanche Exia flying over the base. The base sent out a team of Union flag to pursue Avalanche Exia, but Avalanche Exia activated Avalanche mode and disappeared in a blink of an eye. Robert saw the GM particles trailing behind the Avalanche Exia, which caught his interest and it became the reason why he switched his path to mobile suit development historian. Later, Feather and CB's operatives informed the Ptolemaeus team of a virus based bioterrorist attack. Kyrios was sent to bomb the virus production lab, but the virus was already gone before the bombing. The terrorist group spread the virus in a city near the AEU orbital elevator. Dr. Morano volunteered to create a cure to save people. Setsna suggested to use the avalanche exia as they only got 30 minutes before the virus spread to even more places. Ms. Sumenagi suggested to concentrate the GM particles for flight purpose only and disarmed the avalanche exia to extend the super speed time. Five minutes later, Setsuna and Dr. Morano headed out to the affected city. A squad of AEU inact suddenly appeared and fired towards them. Setsuna can't afford to waste any time and activated the avalanche mode instantly. Avalanche Exia shook off the inact squad and arrived before the bioterrorist attack got worse. Dr. Morano was able to create a cure and saved everyone. After the cure mission was over, Ian reviewed the avalanche unit again and realized that his assumption was wrong. Avalanche unit didn't affect Exia's movement and ability but rather improve extra in general. Since the lower body of the Gundam is still empty, so Ian developed the dash unit combined with the avalanche unit is now called avalanche extra dash dash unit is installed with gn condensers able to release them just like the avalanche unit not only the burst release dash unit also improves the end back of the gundam however dash unit size is quite big so now the gundam is more suitable to operate at super high altitude level or in space avalanche extra dash came with three new modes to use high mobility, high speed, and burst mode. I've already explained high mobility and high speed mode in the Australia episode, so I'll focus on burst mode. Burst mode enhances the short range ability of Avalanche Exia Dash by scattering high density GM particles within the battlefield. Avalanche Exia Dash will create an environment that has an advantage towards it. Since the high density GM particles are scattered around the Gundam, it makes the weight control and end back became easier and more effective. Avalanche unit didn't add any extra armor but Dash Unit does have one new armament, GN Claws. GN Claws are mounted on the tip of the Dash Unit. By generating a small GN field, the destruction power will be increased. Furthermore, the GN Claws can generate a GN Beam Saber, allowing Avalanche Exia Dash to hold four GN Beam Sabers to attack. Before the battle records, I see most of the souls claiming that Avalanche Exia and Avalanche Exia Dash has Taramzam. It's wrong when it comes to timeline. Avalanche Exia or Avalanche Exia Dash deployed just a few months after the armed intervention started. During that time, Eolia is not killed, fast Taramzam is locked and not revealed yet. A short time after the virus-based bioterrorist attack, Union was transporting many asteroids from Martian orbit to Lagrange 1. Those asteroids contained raw materials for building space colonies. An explosion happened and caused one of the larger astronauts heading towards Earth. Union responded by sending armed forces to stop the collision. They were unsuccessful. Veda advised not to action as the asteroid is one of the hidden bases belonged to CB, which could lead to everyone suspecting CB was involved with this incident. Plus, according to the calculation, the astronaut would burn into extremely small fragments. Ms. Sumeragi concluded that the fragments could still have a devastating impact on the Earth's surface, so she created a mission plan to reduce potential damage. Avalanche Exia Dash will be heading into space, breaking the asteroid into smaller parts. Kyrios Gust will stand by at the high altitude level, shooting down the fragments. Dynamis will be on the ground, using the Super Substratospheric Altitude Gun to break the fragments into even smaller pieces. Thanks to the Free Gundam's cooperation, the fragments didn't cause heavy casualties or damage. Thanks to the recent crazy idea of trying to increase the MB cells, we got a new update version of Exia. Device Exia. Again, I'm not buying an MB for this episode as obviously I'm broke. So allow me to give you a brief lore based on what I can find. Device unit is developed to test double drive system. I've already explained the system last episode. You can go back to learn about that. The device unit is using a large GN condenser 
and the unit is directly connected onto XSGN drive. Design-wise, device unit is not limited to a specific Gundam. It's designed to fit all the Gundams. Other than the large GN condenser, the device unit got two subarms folded in the backpack. They can deploy to grab XGS weapon freely, allowing device XGS to operate with more weapons, having a better rotation between weapons or carrying additional weapons. Device XGS new weapon is the Proto GN Raster Sword. The information is pretty messy, so I'll choose one that makes more sense. This is a prototype weapon. The blade used the same material that is used on the GN condensers. And spoiler alert, this part will be expanded in one of the extra repairs. Overall, Proto GN Raster Sword got high destructive power, durable, and one of the key foundations that leads to next generation Gundam use weapons development. It's unsure about optical camouflage or Tolamsum system, as none of those two got mentioned. Extra and Denimus is the only two Gundam known to equip the device unit. Both Gundams did a testing, but an Astraea Type X Finstiness interrupted them. The scene ends with Device Exia charging towards the Type X Finstiness. Device Exia briefly appeared again during the GN Arms Type E testing, but Device Unit was destroyed when Setsuna was pursuing another Type X Finstiness. For the Gundam 00 re innovation, a new variant was created by the innovators known as the I Gundam Type Exia, a replica of the original Exia, except it's powered by GN Drive Tau with no Tolamsum. The eyes are also very similar to the Jinx series. One deployment record. I Gundam Type Exia was seen with I Gundam Type Exia and Type X Finstiness. They found the Astraea 2 and attacked it, but I Gundam Type Exia and Denimus was soon destroyed by Astraea 2. As CB was disbanded after the Operation Fallen Angels, Setsuna lost contact with the remaining members. Exia, severely damaged in the final battle against the GM flag, is unable to repair properly. In those four years, Setsuna kept himself hidden while savaging parts to slightly repair the Exia. The result is Exia repair. A lot of armor parts on the Exia repair is gone. Setsuna couldn't repair those armor by himself, which is why Exia repair is basically exposed. Although Setsuna did get the Exia's head back, but the antenna is damaged and the right side of the face is completely gone. All he can do is use Tielin's mono eye to fix Exia's right eye. At least the visuals are still okay. In the previous battle, Exia already lost most of his armaments. The only weapon that is still available is a broken Gian sword and Gian falcon in the right forearm. Although the Gian sword is broken, it can still rotate between Rival mode and sword mode. Since the blade is broken, extra repair cannot stab or cut the target. Instead, the GN sword can only be used to smack the target. For the broken left arm, because there's no parts to repair it, so Setsuna covers it with just a cloth. Setsuna managed to get extra repair to be operatable, but is unsure whether optical camouflage or Tolamsum is available or not. AD 2312, Arlos launched a MS team to sweep the Catalan's forces who attempted to rescue the prisoners. Setsuna sneaked into the colony, proud to get Arlos information. The MS team arrived and dropped the automatons to slaughter the prisoners. While searching in the colony, Setsuna found Saji Cross Road at the prison section and rescued him. Once they got to the hangar, the Exia Repair arrives and Saji learned that Setsuna is a Gundam Meister. Exia Repair came out and attacked from above. It cuts over Jinx Free's right forearm and Louis Halifi suffered from an anxiety attack when she saw the Gundam. And ahead and Jinx Free was engaging the Exia Repair. Since Exia never repaired, properly and extremely outdated, the ahead overpowered it easily. Not even a few rounds, the GN sword was completely broken by the ahead's GM beam saber. Extra repair was further damaged and about to be finished by a Jinx free. Suddenly, a beam shot came out and saved Setsuna. Tilia found him and engaged the two MS with his new Serav V Gundam. He destroyed a Jinx free and forced the remaining MS to retreat. Setsuna and Extra Repair was retrieved by the newborn CB, and his GN drive matched with old Gundam's GN drive, later led to the successful development of Double O Gundam. Although Setsuna piloted the Double O Gundam during the Arlo's War, but Ian Vesti still refurbished the Extra Repair. The result is Extra Repair 2. Our 2 kept most of the Exia's design and body parts, except it's upgraded with the newest technologies. The obvious change is the GN cables. R2 no longer show the cables and instead they are built inside the armor. Although the cables are built into the armor parts, but the functions are unchanged. Also, by building the GN cables inside the armor parts, it removes the defensive concerns as there are no cables exposed to the enemy. For the GN drive, R2 can use a new mode called Overboost Mode. I read some sources said this mode is available on the Exia 2, but I'm not too sure. 
plus the original action never used this so let's pull it as a question mark over boost mode will deactivate the safety functions in the gn drive entering the boost state or just say it's a maximum output it's discouraged to use this mode as the longer r2 uses this the more unknown risks can happen so r2 will use this in a short time or only use it if needed aside from the gn drive new mode r2 installed a lot of new thrusters on various parts of the body allowing the mobility becoming even better cb is no longer the only organization that got gn drive powered ms esf and arlos got their own gn drive tau ms so the gundams cannot overpower the opponents easily like how they were four years ago r2 took a different route the battle style will be leaning towards one hit kill to improve the battle efficiency r2 changed from seven swords to three swords a few armaments are kept like the GN shield, GN falcons in the forearms, and a pair of GN beam sabers, but now stored on the rotatable mounts on the hips. The main weapon is upgraded to GN sword Kai, basically the GN sword modified with better technologies. Like the GN sword, GN sword Kai can switch between sword and rival mode. The blade is made with the same material used on the Double Rises GN sword 3. The green material is the same material used on GN condensers. The theory is converting GN particles into heat. When GN Sword Kai's blade contacted the target, it transfers the heat to improve the cutting power. Overall, GN Sword Kai got better strength, durability, and sharpness. In the final battle, Reborn's Gundam and Double Riser activated Toramza when for the final strike. However, it was a tie and Lee Bones took one of the Double Riser's GN Drive, fitted the GN Drive into the abandoned old Gundam type ACD. Under Miss Sumenagi's order, Ian Feshti prepared the R2 and fitted the remaining Double Horizons GN drive into the R2. Setsuna appeared again and engaged with Lee Bongs and the old Gundam. R2 turned the overboost mode on, old Gundam threw away the shield and ready to charge. The victory goes to Setsuna, Lee Bongs is killed and both GN drives are destroyed. The war is over, the new government disbanded the Arlos and the world is slowly going back to peaceful times. CB is observing the world quietly, they will still intervene if the situation absolutely needs them. ESF is continuing to roll out new MS that surpassed the 3.5 generation Gundams. CB does realize the organization is lacking MS force so they are looking to refurbish the old Gundams to put them in use. After R2 was retrieved by CB, it was repaired and upgraded again. The result is X-Share Repair Free. Previously, CB lost three original GN drives in the war. With the lack of GN drives, R3 is powered by a large GN condenser. Due to R3 can only operate within a limited time, new GN thrusters are installed to maximize power efficiency. The armor on the knees and shoulders are new. They got GN condensers inside the armor parts to extend the operation time, as well as better particle usage rotation. R3's weapons are shared with R2. The only new weapon on the R3 is GN Long Rival. Obviously, this weapon is for long-range attack. CB's new policy is carrying out the intervention without being seen, so this weapon is also developed based on this policy. GN Long Rival is equipped with the same crystal sensor like the ones on 3.5 generation Gundams. This rival seems long but is foldable to make sure it doesn't affect any melee combat. Due to the GN Long Rival is equipped on the left forearm, GN Shield won't be equipped if GN Long Rival is equipped. Based on Setsuna's fighting style, this GN Long Rival can be detached. But because this weapon contains CB's technology, so Setsuna won't throw it away during melee combat. System-wise, optical camouflage is kept, Tolamzam is usable but it won't last long. And because VEDA is back online again, so R3 is linked to VEDA. After the new government is formed, new restrictions were made on the orbital elevator so CB cannot transfer Gundams or parts easily like how it was before. To make sure the organization can respond to any situation, MS Force is split into Earth and Space Team. R3 is belonged to the CB's Earth team. Sometime after the war, CB discovered that some of the Federation officers kidnapped people with innovative factors, kept them in a facility for experiment, attempting to make super soldiers. Since this mission is related to rescue lives, usage of Gundam is permitted. Setsuna piloted the R3 and arrived at the sniping point. Setsuna sniped the building from far away, 
but missed on purpose and communicated with the prisoners through quantum brainwaves. The prisoners received the escape plan and started a riot in the facility. Setsuna needed to buy time to let the prisoners escape, so he decided to close in and distract the MS team. The mission was successful as the prisoners were freed and all 12 Jinx free were disarmed. AD 2314, the Elves conflict is over as Setsuna successfully completed the dialogue with Elves. Graham Eka is alive as Elves revived him, so his body is partly bonded with Elves. One day, Setsuna came and visited Graham, recruiting him into CB as CB still need to keep the world in order. The moment Graham arrived at the CB base, he picked the extra repair for and called it Graham Gundam. R4 is designed to carry prototype weapons and systems. Although the main base is still extra, R4 is still at the high performance end despite the age. R4's left arm is exposed, but don't worry, the frame of the left arm is built with another material so it's not vulnerable. CB has no spare original GN drive, so R4 is powered by GN drive tau and new version of GN condensers are installed on the body. Back to the left arm part is exposed for another reason. R4 can localize activation of Tolamzam. Thanks to the new version of GN condensers, R4 is able to activate Tolamzam on the left arm only. This is a trial for the future technology that will be used on the 6th generation Gundams. Originally, the exposed arm was supposed to be the right arm, but because Graham is left-handed, so that's why R4 got the exposed arm on the left. Tolamzam can activate normally too but R4 is powered by GN Drive Tau, so it won't last long. Aside from the power source and technology differences, R4's internal parts are upgraded to the 4th generation Gundam standard. A new pair of prototype clavicle antenna is on the R4. It allows the pilot to change the GM particle manipulation, which R4 can further closing the technological gap. Instead of 7 swords, R4 is developed with the codename of 7 blades. The main weapon is GN Tachi, developed based on double quanters GN Sword 5. It's also the base of the future GN Sword 6. All I can find is GN Tachi is better than GN Sword 5 in every category. It inherited the GN Sword 5's slender blade but GN Tachi cannot combine with other blades to form a new weapon. A pair of GN Bayonet is on the back waist arm unit. They are a short sword styled weapon, one of the prototypes created during the development of GN Sword 5. By holding them differently, R4 can quickly switch between sword and rival mode. R4 got a GN shield that is very similar to the one on Double Old Quanta. It's attached to the upper right back and positioned over the right shoulder. On the GN shield, you will see two GM Battle Sword and two GM Battle Blade. It's very easy to identify them. Sword is longer, blade is shorter. They are one of the prototypes created during development of GN Sword 5. Although they are stored on the shield, but they can function as GN Sword bits. No battle records for R4, so let's end the video here. It's another really long episode again. To those who didn't skip a second, Mad respect to you. Well, do you think Australia and Exia is hard to remember? Get ready for Lazio and Double Gundam. These two fry your brain for sure. It takes a really long time to get an episode done. Please remember to subscribe and hit the bell next to it for more. Special thanks to Sesubo for trimming the follows. Join my Discord through the link in the description. I need a break. See you next time. Goodbye.